What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One, and today he's got a gray hat. Which do you normally have a gray hat? Yeah, sometimes gray or black. Mm. I only have those two. Yeah, and today I didn't do my hair, so you guys get what you got. It's the day after Christmas. We're all Christmas cheered out. Yes, or in, depending on how you look at it. That's right. Keep it all bottled inside. But anyway, <laughs> welcome for to another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. That is what none other than the old time friend of the channel, Gotharia Rebels, has done. He says, Sup, boys. Love the content as always. My question is I always wonder what each faction would look like when 50k comes around. Would they have new looks? Would one of the factions be fallen by now? Or would it stay the same but with newer technology and plots? Please, I still play Dawn of War. I wish I could play Dawn of War sometimes. Uh, I wish like there was like an easy access type of, of, of way to play it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sadly, there's not. No. Unless um, you... Uh, is it on Steam? It's probably on Steam. Yeah. yeah. So let's go down with like the very or down the line of all the factions of what they might look like in 50k starting with the Imperium. What do you think is going to happen to the Imperium? So the Imperium I feel is on a seesaw of sorts like it could either do really well it could either fall um, but I think for the most part the way the lore is kind of shaping things to be is that they're going to be fighting a losing battle. Um, they're kind of akin to the Eldar, where they had their Golden Age, and now they're kind of steadily declining as chaos is on the rise. So it's going to be a more war-torn uh, Imperium. Humanity is going to start losing, or probably already has lost their hopelessness. Um, and it's more like, think of like Mad Max, like that type of thing, but on a galactic scale, where it's each world basically is vying for themselves. Or I could see like certain segmentums of space allying together like i still believe um like mccrag and the, the ultima segmentum would still hold its own uh power and territory but again it'd be like warlords kind of i think it'd be really like cool and out there if um we got like factions within the imperium like even broken down into even smaller mm -hmm. like kingdoms like you were saying uh that'd be really cool um, and to give it that flavor of the techno barbarian warlords of yeah. old earth. That's basically what it's another, a retelling of a 30k, or yeah. pre 30k era Imperium. Because it would give you a whole new, like, um, sense of what the Imperium is if you had that, you know, a bunch of factions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, still trying to, like, get control. Even though I do think that we're going to get more prime marks. Yeah, eventually. returning. <clears throat> and eventually we're going to get, like, uh, information as to like what's happening with the emperor mm -hmm. is he gonna die is he gonna become a god uh, and 50k hopefully would be that era yeah i actually have a whole two three four videos on the death of 40k and what these uh, factions would look like once 50k comes around so go ahead and check that out there's a playlist yeah um yeah and then as far as like um the elder do you think the elder would be destroyed no, because GW just put out new sculpts. <laughs> <laughs> they look cool. They do. Um, nice little revamp. Uh, but honestly, they should be. Lore-wise, they should be kind of wiped out. Or maybe have them be like a minor race where they're still there in the lore. They just don't really do much. Yeah, I feel like the Eldar are just one of those factions that just exist because it's... Um, they're elves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but they're not really like anything special, I feel. Mm -hmm. Like there's no... like gim their, their gimmick is not cool um but yeah I, I also see them falling uh even though like this with the creation of their god i wish that gw would do more with this yeah god. A, a freaking god has been birthed for, to the eldar race and they're like eh, Gil <laughs> gilliman came back <laughs> it's it got overshadowed i do feel that um one of the factions with the most um like ability to grow would be the tau Definitely, because they've been on a huge rise since the Ethereals um, came in to the picture. And if you look at their, like, goal, like, really what they need to do is conquer faster than light travel. Mm -hmm. And then once they have that, boom. That's it. Yeah. It's end game. Yeah, they're going to proliferate. What about Chaos? Chaos, um, it'll be the opposite of the Imperium. They're going to start getting, gaining their uh, golden age, so to speak. Um, the Abaddon will conquer Terra or something like that. They'll have their own portion of space that they control, not just like in the warp and be scattered. 
Um, I still like it'll still be kind of like almost warlords with like each demon primarch taking its own sector of space. Um, but yeah, they're they're gonna be the new Imperium. That would that would be really cool. Like um, future of forty k where. Chaos and the Tau are going head to head mm -hmm. because it's kind of poetic with like the Necrons and the old ones, uh, except reversed where like the Necrons were the bad guys and the old ones were the good good guys, um, and the old ones were psychically powered, Necrons weren't. But yeah. now it'd be like the Tau are the good guys, they're not psychically powered, and then Chaos are the, are the bad guys, and then they're and they, yeah, yeah warp so. psychic power. Yeah, um, Tyranids would be like destroying yeah. everything. I was gonna say yeah, honestly, the Tyranids would be the biggest threat. Um, but speaking of Tyranids, that comes hand in hand with the orcs. Yeah. Do you think they'd still be? Yeah. A huge thing. I they wouldn't be a huge thing in terms of like galaxy changing wars. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like God schools would still be around. Yeah. Uh, and there would still be like orc factions fighting for specific areas and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So yeah. logs still rampaging across the galaxy yeah in my uh, death of 40k i said that the orcs since they're fighting with the tyranids in the Ulanor crusade what that's basically going to create is a whole bunch of really strong black orcs and those are the ones that are going to take control of the galaxy um, bit by bit with their use of teleporters yeah i also read a fan uh, future event to uh where the orcs and the tyranids actually fused mm -hmm. i've heard that they just too. became one species after all that fighting Tyranorks. Tyranorks. Orcanids. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys should check out the playlist if you're interested yes. uh, in learning more about that future. Uh, next question comes from Zero Noctis. For both of you guys and the coming community, or no, for both of you guys and the community, would you play an army of only 3D prints? I, a summoning good quality and decently painted. Oh, yeah. assuming. Yeah, assuming is, yeah, why not? Like, we've seen time and time again that, like, third party guys are trying their darndest to really, like, step up their creativity and just, like, the detail that you can do with 3D printing. And it's definitely doable. There are a ton of videos out there where it's like, I've got 24 hours to 3D print an army and paint it. Can I do it? They can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um,. I would say that I would want to design my own, like, miniatures at that point. Like, I don't think I would want to go and just buy mm -hmm. the template and then, like, do the thing. Mini War Gaming's doing that. Is it where he's, they're selling templates? Well, I don't think they're, they're to that level yet, but they're designing their own, like, minis. You know what's funny? Like, that was... I feel like everybody knew that that was going to happen. Like, oh, yeah. like, years and years ago, I remember you guys asking us questions about 3D printed stuff. Mm -hmm. And... and that's what we were saying like yeah eventually this is gonna happen um the eventually is now yeah and now you know what's funny uh, mini war gamer matt he he said that it probably wouldn't be that big of an issue because 3d printing is still not as great and like that was not too long ago right and now look at them they're they're doing some some big stuff so mm -hmm. that's kind of cool yeah next question this one's by maverick azure dawn of war is still really good I have Soulstorm, and I play the Unification mod, and it's a happy time. But, why do you think the first Dawn of War game is better than the sequels, if you've played it and them? So we played the original Dawn of War, and we played a little bit of the other ones. I don't think we ever played the last Dawn of War. Yeah. So the reason... The reason, because we do have a friend who played the latest Dawn of War, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the game completely changed. It's yeah. not what it used to be. It's more of a skirmish mm -hmm. type of game, whereas before with the Dawn of War, you had big ass armies. Yes. Um, and what made it uh, like better is just because it was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the new one, there was a lot of things that kind of pushed away from the realism. Like you had a Terminator champion doing backflips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Really, like. It's that's the thing about 40k. It's like when you give somebody a game of 40k, there's expectations because most people get into 40k because of the lore. Um, and when you deviate from that, then it kind of pulls away from what 40k is. And we can see that in other media, not just the video games, such as Warhammer Adventures, because we know 40k is all about like there's only war. It's supposed to be grim, dark, and you have kids being uh chummy with like necrons yeah <laughs> like yeah. no these necrons warriors would de-atomize them asap yeah also dawn of war like uh capitalized on that that feeling of huge battles mm -hmm. 
that we all want as war gamers. Um, and whereas like the, the latest Dawn of War, that kind of goes away. They're they're more focused on like unit upgrades, yeah, which is cool. But like back then, you didn't really care about upgrading. Like you you did care about upgrading your um your units, but not to the extent of like the latest ones. Dude. Yeah, you just wanted to get a big ass army, <laughs> and then fight another person with a big ass army. Yeah, I still remember one of my favorite games. I think it was like a one v one v one, and I was playing Necrons at the time, and I put my home base all the way at the end of like a mountain ravine, and in order to get to me, they had to go through this little narrow corridor, and I just bumped it off with a whole bunch of scarab swarms so it's like if you wanted to get through me you had to like like it's going to whittle your you down by the time you get to me where everything is just going to fire back at you yeah yeah i remember the mines too yeah you would plant mines in those situations so like you would see the soldiers run and then poof, they blow up and yeah. they're going t to the thing that was fun yeah nostalgia is really something isn't it it is <laughs> next question this one is by nikita helsing with GW going all mainstream, how long do you think it will be before a company like Brazzers does a parody film? I think already, it already exists. Like, if you look up uh, Warhammer 40k porn, you get it. <laughs> Not that I have, I've done it or, like, or yeah. that I've looked we don't. We it. don't know for sure. Yeah, like, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, usually it's, like, cartoons. <laughs> so what is that called? A uh, hentai? hentai? But I thought it has to be Asian. Right? Oh, that's true, yeah. Some cartoons, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah, <laughs> maybe the, that's how we find out which actor would be a good, you know, to portray a certain somebody, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, then, or go ahead. Oh, I feel like sometimes with like cosplayers, um, like especially like Warhammer 40k cosplayers who cosplay as Sisters of Battle or the Eldar, uh, they're just like one step away from <laughs> just like just. It, don't do anything or don't change anything just start fucking <laughs> and boom there it is <laughs> yeah but yeah um helsing continues on by saying p.s do you guys think we'll ever get a new um mark one power armor marine i don't know man probably not no because even with like the horus heresy from forge world like they're kind of slowly advancing towards like the final battle on terra and whatnot um yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, GW recently has put out like, oh, we're bringing this from the vault, but it's not like new upgraded stuff. It's still those old, um, I guess you could say janky looking marines or sculpts from back in the day where they look goofy in comparison to the ones now. Yeah. So it's more of like, a, hey, if you didn't get it back then and you're a collector, we're bringing it for this one time. Um, so you can put it in your collection. Yeah, but yeah. you probably got to pay like three times as much yeah. <laughs> as it was back then. I think that's kind of exciting, that whole concept of um, uh, the Horus Heresy finally ending. So that means Forge World needs to focus on something else. Right. I'm crossing my fingers and hopefully somebody in Forge World uh, listens to this. Uh, do the Unification Wars. Mm -hmm. Like, just tell the stories of the Unification Wars. That would be awesome. You know, if somebody from Forge Road was listening to this, they'd probably stop at the 40k porn. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe that's the only thing they listen to. Next question comes from Francis Castellon. With the Emperor's ascending, apparently, to godhood, and also with him being worshipped as a god, was Lorgar right all along? Kind of, yeah. But I think it's like a self-fulfilling self prophecy. Whereas, like... Like, um... Because Lorgar, like, it's he had something to do with the worship of the Emperor. Like, mm -hmm. he actively worked to put the Lecticio Divinatis into the hands of, like, the Imperial Ecclesiarchy so that they can start uh, preaching, preaching and all that kind of stuff. So, like, it's not really... Is it a, is it a prophecy when the person is actually, like, pushing towards that because wouldn't that just be hard work <laughs> yeah like well, maybe he was prophesized to always do that yeah but yeah i guess it's his destiny his fate it's kind of like god school like every like his whole thing was like he had a vision where he had like five or six great wogs raging um so that's what he's trying to accomplish now the big party basically mm -hmm. um but it like 
it i don't know it's is it a prophecy if like you're actively like pushing for that right <clears throat> tell us answer us right now camera if not we'll just go to juan jose mendeville's camera i just got that uh, his question is if the emperor would bend the world just to be proven right how far would the em or the eldar go to be proven right how petty are they willing to be eldar are super petty they are so they're stuck up they see themselves as better than everybody else i mean they call humans monkeys yeah, <laughs> monkey yeah, or yeah. monkey yeah yeah um so yeah they they, they will do a lot um, but I don't think they'll go as far as sacrificing like one of their own, because I mean there's not much to like left of them to sacrifice. Well, no, but they would sacrifice because that's what avatars are. Oh yeah, I guess so. The uh, aspect warrior, I think it is, or mm -hmm. whatever. Phoenix has, Lord. Yeah, they have to like die and then become the avatar of Cain and get his ass beat. <laughs> like that's that's one of the shittiest things that could happen to an Eldar. I feel yeah. like being turned into an avatar of Cain because you're you're gonna lose. <laughs> they suck. Yeah. Every single story, mm -hmm. tabletop, everything, they suck. Right. You Their either, models suck. You either get beat by a Primarch, or you get trampled by a stampede of Carnifexes, you get soloed by, like, some no-name Marine. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least they got an upgrade in their sculpt recently. Did or not, really? rec not recently, but, like, ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully with this new Eldar stuff, we might get new... Uh... Mm -hmm. Avatar of Cain, because yeah. the Avatar of Cain, I think, it, yeah, from Forge World, that one looks cool. Well, he's got like a spear. Yeah, you can but, see his abs. <laughs> but this mm -hmm. one, the one for GW, or the uh, Warhammer store, mm -hmm. um, sucks. Yeah, even the Age of Sigmar looks better, and it's just supposed to be like a statue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question comes from Return Fire. Gershwin is getting super buffed up. Did he receive gene seed implantation recently? If yes, from which Primark? That would be really cool if I can get gene seed uh, from a Primark. And I would probably choose Magnus the Red. Ooh. Because I want that psychic. Oh, I thought you wanted those uh, nipple horns. The nipple horns? No. Next question. Uh, this one is by Shinku Kiritu Ichika. Between Kueyas... <laughs> what? I wanted to do it all in like a cheap love voice, but I can't. My mouth is just going to smile the whole time. Between chaos and those beings from the Cthulhu the Prethrian mythos. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. Who do you think would win between them? Chaos versus Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Mm, mm, maybe. Or, you know what? No, no, no. Because, yeah, like, I've read a few Lovecraftian stories. And they're still biological, like right. those those things. Like humans don't understand how mm -hmm. they work, but like that's the same thing that what well, chaos does. Well, no, because chaos is not grounded in right. In but like that's logic. the thing. Like there's no way humans could understand chaos fully. Yeah, yeah. But I think like so, the Cthulhu gods could not understand the chaos gods. I could see that, yeah. and the chaos gods wouldn't even care because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're chaos. Right. Uh, so I, I, you know what, I would give it to chaos. Yeah, yeah. You've convinced me. Even though, even though the, the thing I don't like about chaos sometimes is that they focus on like the chaos space marines, cultists, stuff like that, but never the actual like gods themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be really cool and fun to explore. Yeah, because we get very little on the chaos gods, um, and whenever we do get something, it's really badass. Like Corn just swatting away one of his strongest bloodthirsters, and he travels for a week with that momentum when time doesn't exist in the war. Like, yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> uh, Changeling6879 says, How did the Death Guard, and to a lesser extent, the other factions of Chaos, react to the damage done to the Garden by the souped-up Gilliman? It was said in God Blight that the damages done to the Garden managed to hurt Nurgle himself. Who react? How? Uh, yeah. How do? How does chaos react to that? Oh, they got scared. Mm -hmm. They're like, "Damn, he could do that." Gee, I'm gonna take two steps back. And then they look at the demon primarchs and be like, "Why the fuck aren't you guys doing that? <laughs> right. You're the same thing." Yeah, primarchs? even you should be better than him. He ain't powered by chaos. And then that turned into like a a, a breaking the fourth wall or whatever. Uh, when chaos then looked at GW and was like, "What are you fucking writing?" <laughs> Mortarion got beat by a gray knight. What the fuck? Yeah. Gilliman was losing, but you guys wrote the Emperor to power him up. Yeah. Why couldn't you do that during the 30k <laughs> era? 
Um, but yeah, honestly, it doesn't really mean too much. Because, yeah, you do damage to the gardens of Nurgle, and it does affect Nurgle. But Chaos is a wheel. Um, it'll just regrow, and Nurgle will be back and fine. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be fine. Yeah. It's like um, humans. Like, you get knocked out. As long as they don't keep pummeling you, you'll be fine. That's true. That's why, like, if you're um, ever trampled, uh, just get up. Yeah. <laughs> This is going to be the last question from Brian B. Do you think that chaos, the chaos gods would find One Mind Syndicate interesting? Honestly, I don't know who finds us interesting anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. We get an array of interesting people in the comments, and it's like, wow, you're more interesting than I am. What are you doing here? Yeah. Uh, and it's also uh, funny to like get the viewers' response from YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, because they're all different, mm -hmm. and you guys all represent like different, uh, like portions of the great pie that is one mind syndicate viewers. Mm -hmm. um, so like the demographics are interesting. Yeah, well, thank you for being unique. Yeah, interesting, inquisitive, and it's also to connect with a bunch of like um, Hispanic um, war gamers from mm -hmm. all over the world. A lot of you guys from Chile, Argentina, Poland, Poland. Yeah, yeah that was pretty cool. Um, Angel, who just tried uh, Vortillos for the first time. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. Yeah. So um, we're one big happy family. Yes. So the Chaos Gods would find us interesting just because of that. Mm -hmm. Because we're spreading the message of, of Nurgle, Korn, mm -hmm. Zinch, maybe Slanesh, Bridget B. Oh, for sure, Slanesh. <laughs> and those were the questions for today. If yep. you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for listening. Yeah. Put question before your question. Because we get to those questions first. Sound Alchemist. Kirsch one. Out. <laughs>